This is live TV and the latest news is that Nicola Sturgeon is expected to resign as Scottish First Minister after eight years in charge. The Scottish National Party leader is expected to hold a news conference at 11 o'clock this morning in just under an hour. And we will, of course, bring you that live. Tom Harwood uh, joins me now. Uh, good morning, Tom. Um, you came off air. This hadn't happened. That was, what, seven minutes ago? <laughs> Um, this has come out of the blue somewhat or not? Somewhat out of the blue. And um, <clears throat> I've just been asking around some sources north of the border to see exactly what's going on here, because there are a couple of things that uh, are uh, in the play, in the mix. There was one poll last week that showed in support for independence, for partition of the United Kingdom has crashed down to just below 40 percent, mm. much, much lower than it was during the peak, during those uh, Scottish lockdowns that we saw uh, support really, really rise. Yeah. Uh, so clearly support for Nicola Sturgeon's cause has been dimming. Mm. Um, but also there are many questions within the SNP, which has always traditionally been an incredibly united party, presenting a very united front, almost to the state of, 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 of a very unusual lack of internal dissent. We've started to see some more internal dissent sort of bubbling up. Nicola Sturgeon, of course, has been First Minister since 2014, quite a long time at the helm. And there are some voices within her party mm. who have been been sort of gently saying that potentially it's time to move on. And thirdly, there is this uh, question that has been bubbling up in the last week or so um, of this ongoing questions around a missing £600,000 that the SNP has raised since 2017 to fight an independence referendum. And yet that £600,000 seems to have gone missing from the SNP's accounts. So there are many, many questions around that and a probe that has begun. Do we know so who the all of this, was of that? That is um, crowdfunded through right. multiple uh, donations that explicitly... Uh, for the cause of an independence referendum, but doesn't seem to have ended up in that pot. And we're not sure where it's gone or what it's been spent on. So there are questions around that that could also be factoring into this. Ultimately, there are those big, big factors playing into what is, uh, to some people, a very mm. welcome announcement. To others, a very shocking announcement. Yeah. No one at the beginning of today was necessarily expecting this. Absolutely. There was a, an article on The Spectator, I think, only from about five hours ago, saying uh, that she was living on borrowed time. It looks slightly prescient now. Of course, she's been embroiled in this uh, gender self-declaration uh, male yeah, syndrome. Yeah, it, it really came down to this one case which really caught the public's imagination of Isla Bryson. This is the transgender double rapist. And the question was whether one, <coughs> when they should go into a female pre, uh, mm. prison, which kind of put Nicola Sturgeon in the middle of this kind of moral and political mm. quagmire with the Gender Recognition Reform Bill, which, of course, Rishi Sunak and the UK Parliament blocked mm. because they said it would damage women's rights under the UK Equality Act. Mm. Do you think it will be that this is what has pushed her over the edge, Tom? I think undoubtedly this is a factor in what's going on. Nicola Sturgeon looked flustered in an interview a couple of weeks ago around this question. Is this particular individual a rapist who only after being charged suddenly decided mm. that they might be transgender? Nicola Sturgeon and the way that she responded to that has come under a lot of criticism. Normally, she's a very adept media performer, yes. but under questioning over this issue, she, she seemed to get rattled, she seemed to get flustered, yeah. she seemed like the shine had come off. Now, it's important that we emphasise the situation of this particular prisoner is a separate question mm. from the self-ID legislation that was going through the Scottish Parliament, because that's not so much to do with prisons, uh, but the question of uh, this individual, this rapist, uh, was sort of happening at the same time, and all got tied up really in did. the same narrative. And, and if, I've, if I've understood this correctly, I I think the gender self-declaration would have allowed um, Isla Bryson to have identified quite quickly as a woman by law and therefore could have gone into a women's prison, so even though, the, even though so, the crime was committed when they were Adam Graham, their dead name. So actually, as the law stands since mm. 2004, 
transgender people do not need a GRC to a gender recognition certificate, certificate yeah. to go into another prison. The GRC isn't a, isn't a sort of passport to go from one prison sure. to the other. And actually, as things were standing, we must remember there isn't GRC reform in Scotland. That was blocked by Westminster. Yeah. And yet still this individual was expected and was being planned to go into a woman's prison. So that was the situation before debate around self-ID. Yes. But, yet, but yet what clearly was supposed to happen was a system of individual assessment. And uh, the big political criticism here is that the assessment was not going well. Many people think that this individual is not transgender, is faking it, has only suddenly decided to do this after being charged with violent yes. crime. They, they would, of course, say the opposite, I guess. Mm. Um, Scots agreed with um, with the UK government about two to one, I think, in mm. order to not push this bill and for the UK government um, to block it. What detail do you think we will get from her? So if you're just joining us now, Nicola Sturgeon, we believe, is going to make a statement at uh, 11 o'clock uh, to announce her resignation. Knowing her character, Tom, how do you think she will um, announce her departure? Is she the kind of character that will blame other people? Will she go so far as to blame Rishi Sunak? I think that we'll see a very defensive statement from Nicola Sturgeon. She's someone, <coughs> excuse me, like my water. Who has, uh, that would you, actually you be. Have been, you have been on TV <laughs> half an hour before this, which uh, is Thank you very in. much. It's, uh... <laughs> you know, she's not mm. known for necessarily. Uh, she comes out swinging, doesn't she? Nicola she certainly Sturgeon? does. I mean, I've, I've run into her on a number of occasions. I, I, I chased her through uh, a COP26 <laughs> just uh, in, in uh, just over sort of 14 months ago, and um, she was not really happy to answer many questions questions from me at that time. Mm. But similarly, she's known to have quite a tight media operation around her, a very close-knit circle of advisers. There's been a lot of criticism that the way in which the SNP and its executive is run is by her and her husband, mm. who's the chief exec of the SNP, and a very tight group of people. We saw, of course, when Nicola Sturgeon was being uh, accused of, of, of wrongdoing by Alex Salmond and, 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 and that sort of inquiry that went on within Holyrood um, just over a year ago. We saw how very many of uh, Nicola Sturgeon's closest advisers have sort of acted to create this sort of protective ring around her. And I, I think to some extent we're going to see a lot of that same defensiveness yeah. today from Nicola Sturgeon. She, she pretty much said that she she was going to turn the 2024 general election into a, a de facto referendum, didn't she, on independence. Mm. Will Rishi Sunak this morning be breathing a sigh of relief? that she's no longer the First Minister? I guess it depends who's waiting in the wings. Well, interestingly, I spoke to a number of Conservative uh, members of the Scottish Parliament after that announcement from Nicola Sturgeon, mm. who were breathing a sigh of relief. They believed that actually the, uh, the, the idea that the SNP would brand a, a general election as a de facto referendum would help them yes. against the, the party's wider uh, prospects. And so uh, Conservative MSP, or Conservative members of Parliament in Scotland, who sit in more marginal seats, thought that they were safer because they'd be able to say, look, you've got to back me if you're a unionist, no matter what's going on with the yeah. party and how it's run in Westminster. Yeah. Now, I think that whoever takes the lead of the SNP after this, because, of course, the conversation will very quickly turn to who are the potential people who are going to stand for this position. What's their vision going to be in terms of leading the SNP? It's going to be very unlikely that there's someone who is less adamantly in favour mm. of independence. If anything, we might well see a, a, a hardening of the SNP's stance, potentially uh, some people from the wing of the party that has been pushing for an illegal referendum. They might be a large voice in the conversation that is about to happen within that party. And clearly, there will be people standing for the leadership mm. who are trying to uh, really make a case for a very radical membership. So we might well see a shift in the way that this party is run and in its tactics away from, if you can describe Nicola Sturgeon in any way as moderate, but we might see an even uh, greater sense of, of devil, radicalism you know, from um, a new leader. She's obviously such a, a, a powerful figure, she's such an identifiable figure in the British media. 
Who is waiting in the wings, do you think? Who we might know of, we might recognise her face, we might know their names. Who might be taking her place, do you think? Who the, might be in the running for that role? There are some really big names, of course. Some who have uh, represented the SNP in Westminster and have returned up to Holyrood in the last uh, elections. There are also some people who have been uh, perceived to be closer to Nicola Sturgeon and some who have perceived to, been perceived to be further away from Nicola Sturgeon. So a lot of names in the mix. Some of the uh, big ones that we might well be thinking of are, are the new finance minister who was uh, uh, installed by Sturgeon just a couple of years ago. She might be very well a name that wants to throw her hat in the ring. But also there's the uh, constitutional minister within the uh, SNP's Scottish government as well. There are some people who would be seen to be more on the Sturgeon side of things and other people who would be seen to be on the other side of things. We might well see sort of a, a token campaign from those around the Joanna Cherry faction within the party mm. who are much more on the gender critical side of things. There were a, a, a small minority of SNP MPs who voted against that gender reform bill in Scotland as well. Maybe they will uh, make themselves known with a candidate too. OK. All right. Thank you, Tom.